I woke up this morning to the sound of adventure. I searched for the source, checking every nook and cranny and getting clothes on at the same time because personally, I like to face my adventures properly dressed. I couldn't find the source of the call, so kind of unsure of what to do next, I popped on over to Angela's house. Oh, can you help me out for a second? Where she handed me a vintage pattern and said, I think you should make this. Since my quest is to apparently make a new dress, we do need to go ahead and go to a fabric store to get ourselves some material that's gonna work really nicely with that pattern. She's hanging out in the Joann's. <laughs> that's what I do. Always, yeah. And my natural habitat. Personally, I wasn't quite sure what sort of fabric to go for because there's so many to choose from, but I did know that I at least wanted to do something new, some sort of material that I haven't had the chance to work with before. Angela, however, already knew exactly the sort of fabric she had in mind. I think squatting into Joann's is my best angle. <laughs> so we're trying to get something to match your hair, right? Yes. Awesome, awesome. And we have a very lovely blue at the moment, so we are hunting down some blues for her. I don't know what I'm getting yet. Unable to make a decision on my own, I turned to you, my trusty friend folk of the internet, and posted a set of polls on Instagram. There was a blue fabric with like a black floral overlay. There was this like a sparkly purple sequin fabric with some flowers over it. There was this like red blue shifting neatness with uh, like a gold on top. There was a lovely lavender with like some butterflies and flowers over it. And lastly was this very kind of peaches and cream summery fabric with like orange and pink flowers, very cute. I was feeling very, very inspired by Angela's like hair dress matching idea. So I decided why not? Whatever, you know, fabric we ended up walking out with, I'm gonna see if I can dye my hair to match. All right, so here is the winner, the very fun like pink and orange and cream sort of lace overlay and then the nice cream to go underneath to really show it off beautifully and then it felt like it needed just a little something extra so uh, this looks very alarming it's less alarming on the the proper side uh, and i think that this is going to go really nicely with some of the creams and oranges over here sort of creamsicle e. With our fabric selection nice and settled, we then moved on to the preparation of the pattern, the paper pattern. We took it out, we organized the pieces, we got it ironed nice and flat and smooth. We didn't really make much more progress beyond that on the mock-up or the dress or anything because we might have gotten a little bit distracted with uh, hair shenanigans. All right, it is hair bleaching and dyeing time. I have changed into something that I don't mind getting a little bit messy in and I'm excited to see how this works out. I'll admit this next part is a little bit more Angela's area of expertise than mine, but from what I understand, we took a tiny bit of lightener and developer and mixed them together and tested it out on like a very small area of my hair just to check like how much time my hair would need to work the bleach magic. So we tested out a couple different sort of developer options back here. Of course, now that I want to tell it to you about it, I can't find it, but somewhere back here is some test strips and they both look pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the real thing. We then made a much bigger batch of bleach and sort of separated my hair out, making kind of a, a line across the back of my head and a very stylish little forehead ponytail. I'm thinking maybe I will add the foils at the end when everything is covered. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think that's gonna matter. Whatever makes you happy. I'm not, I'm not gonna critique. Don't Mostly because I can't see it. Otherwise you'd be very judgmental. <laughs> She applied the bleach in a few stages, sort of doing the ends first and then working her way up to the roots. So we have washed out the bleach, which as you can tell, it has been bleached and we're now going for some fun color additions to try and match that fabric. Since the fabric has these lovely flowers of cream, orange, and pinks, we tried to get colorful hair dye to match. Angela suggested this brand, so that is what we went with, and she even did a little bit of blending to try and adjust the shades closer to the fabric, although she did seem to prefer a particular color out of the bunch. Show them all the oranges I made. <laughs> orange one, two, and three. Look, I am mainly an artist, and orange is apparently my vessel. <laughs> I take my work very seriously. <laughs> 
you want to show them? <laughs> your, your handiwork? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> All right, there were paper towels separating out the blonde bits, and then I take the paper towels out, and it hasn't been conditioned yet, so it all just sort of <laughs> stayed there. <laughs> and it looks like some sort of sea anemone. <laughs> but it's gonna be pretty, it's gonna be fine. Once we got all that fun hair painting done, we let that sit for a bit and then rinsed it out, by which time it was getting pretty late, so it was basically bedtime. I, I will admit, I was super stressed out about the possibility of potentially like staining her sheets with my new hair. Fortunately, was absolutely not a problem, which is a fantastic. But speaking of sheets, let me show you something. Look at my very sexy new ones. Ta-da! Look at how cute my bed looks, all thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Brooke Linen. A really quick backstory. So we moved here several months ago without a bed and we luckily did get a new situation figured out pretty quickly, but we have been using kind of hand-me-down sheets this whole time, long story. The point is that we are super happy to finally have our own sheets where we picked the color and the style and they're, they're just really, really lovely. So nice sheets can be pretty pricey, but Brooklinen's goal is to try and provide really nice bed covers at a more affordable price to you by cutting out the middle guy. Extra excitingly, Brooklyn is having a birthday sale from April 26th to May 4th. All of Brooklinen's products are 20% off on their website. Just use my link down below to get there. The reason that I am so excited about these is that Brooklinen has some nice linen sheets now. Cotton is great and all, but you know that linen is my favorite, right? <laughs> it's gonna be so nice in the warm summer weather to have really cool linen sheets. They also have some great bundles so that you can get your sheets and your pillowcases and your duvet cover and all that all at once and save money compared to if you bought them separately. Using the website, you can even select which colors you want in the sets, like mix and matching. The linen is so dang soft, and in the morning when we are starting our day in bed, uh, we just kind of want to stay here as long as we can. But anyways, fortunately, there was no hair dyeing shame involved in this bed or the other and so we were able to pass the night without incident and move on to the mock-up phase. The bust was a little bit high on me so I'm going to add some room to the top half and then remove that same room from the bottom half to try and get the underbust seam where it's supposed to be on me. Now we can move on to the actual fabric. This orange peach one is just a little too drapey and slightly stretchy to be on its own. So I'm going to flat line it with a light quilting cotton, basting them together so that they behave as one fabric from here on out. These can be fairly large basting stitches, but sometimes I admit I'm not paying attention and I'll make them kind of smaller than they need to be. I do recommend at least basting within the seam allowance if you can, because then you don't have to fuss as much about removing all those basting stitches later on when you're done. The bodice pattern has a few darts at the elbow of the sleeve, so I got those marked out and hope Hopefully this water soluble marker works out and then I can pinch each dart together, pin trying to make sure that that pin really cleanly pierces both sides of the marked dart line. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but being close will at least make sure that you have a fairly accurate dart. Then I stitched all the darts just kind of following along that marker line and pulling out pins right before the machine's about to go over them. According to the pattern instructions, the next thing is adding the facing pieces to the front and the back, and I'm trimming away all the excess seam allowance with pinking shears so that it's less bulky right here at the neckline. I turned it over and then stitched again just barely into the facing. You can see that the front half that I've already done kind of helps hold the facing down so that it won't be visible once it's being worn. The top pieces are prepped, so we can move on to the bottom half. The skirt has seven total panels, so I'll really neatly cut them out in the pale foundation fabric first. 
Once I have all of those pieces cut out and I've verified that I didn't miss any, I'm gonna go ahead and mark out the darts on the skirt. This is something that the patterning paper is really, really handy for. I can just mark each of those little dots and it'll transfer through the paper to the surface of the fabric. It's very light, but just enough that I can see and connect the dots to make my darts. It's time for the sheer overlay. At Angela's recommendation, I have laid down my foundation pieces with enough space between each other that I can make sure that there's at least a good inch or so of seam allowance extending beyond each of the foundation edges. Flat lining really large pieces of fabric like this that are very shifty like lace can be really tricky and that extra room gives us some leeway in case we need to sort of adjust things later. Just like with the top, each of these panels is going to be basted together so that the foundation and the layers below are kind of treated as one fabric from here on out. Then we can start joining all those panels together, effectively ignoring where the lace is cut and just focusing on the foundation edges. That does make it a little bit difficult and tricky to sew, but it's not too bad. I stitched all of the darts on the front panels and then ironed them flat on one side, which you can see looks really nice. And then on the other side, I haven't ironed it yet, which means that it's a little bubbly in appearance. We're gonna go ahead and fix that with a little bit of ironing on all of our seams after we've stitched them. The back of the skirt has this really interesting detail. A little bit of extra fabric is added here and it creates a set of deep pleats. They're still basted together right now, but it should look pretty cool when it's done. Now that all of the front and back panel skirts are done, we can stitch them to their respective top pieces. As I pin, I try to make sure that I'm catching the darts in a way that they stay in whatever direction I previously ironed them. It can be really easy to accidentally flip them one way or the other while you're sewing them otherwise. Same process for the back pieces, and once they're attached, we can see about stitching a zipper to the center back opening. I basted the zipper seam closed temporarily so that I could nicely lay down the zipper centered on top of it, and then pin it in place and then stitch on both sides. I then removed the basting stitches and we have a nice functional zipper, but I do need to add a hook and eye to the very, very top to securely keep it closed. I like to stitch one side of the hook and eye first and then kind of keep the two pieces together while I stitch the second half. That way I have a fairly good amount of luck with making sure that they're not accidentally misaligned in the end. Now that the skirt pieces are mostly stitched and looking good, I can remove all of that excess lace overlay, which took a solid moment with so many seams and I had a very nice sizable pile of lace scrap in the end. This is looking so cute. I stitched one side seam and now it can stitch the second one as well as the shoulder seams. This has a fairly tight waist and I don't wanna put undue strain on the seams at this really narrow point. So I'll add a waist tape and then attach it to the inside using these little seam points. I started at the center back and then slightly stretching the fabric as I go, I got everything pinned down and stitched down. Don't worry about it being super neat here. There's not a low chance that you might need to unpick some of these stitches and adjust the waistband at a later date if it's not quite right on the first go. Onto the final details, like adding a cute contrasting cuff on the sleeves. I stitched the outside of the dress first and then I flipped it inside and then folded the edge. Well, or I thought about it and then I, on second thought, decided to not fold that second one because it was a little bulky. So herringbone stitches it is. Angela kindly made me a few decorative buttons using her magic button gadget over here. They uh, aren't exactly for buttoning anything, it's just aesthetics. <laughs> like when people hang up the wedding dresses, pick some bridesmaid dresses. Wait, who, who's the bride and who's the bridesmaid in this context? I think we're both the mother of the bride. <laughs> All right, now for the finished hair look. We curled our hair last night, so I am excited to see how we have fared now. Of course, I have to take out 
one million pins, but I think this is super cute. The like really bright, you know, contrasts of color and, and uh, like dark versus light. It's just it's neat. I'm, I'm really excited to see what it looks like. All right, all the pins are out. So let's see if we can do something resembling a brush out. I might need to go borrow a brush. I'll just come over to your house, steal all your supplies, force you to color my hair. I'm a very, like, steal needy. Steal my looks, steal my stuff. Ah, <laughs> oh, there is the cutest puppy next to me. Can I show you? Hi, sweetie. Oh, such a sweetie, hi. Oh, cute puppy. Oh, such a good girl. <laughs> All right, that took surprisingly little effort though to really quickly kind of brush it out and it looks, at least I can, from what I can see here in the viewfinder, relatively presentable. Uh, I am covered in glitter though, which does seem to be the natural state of being near Angela, so. Working on getting dressed and I am wearing the most becoming of under things. It's very exciting. To match the accent orange cuffs and little buttons and all those little orange flowers, I attached a band at the underbust. It's not 100% done here, but you get the idea. We found a really cute vintage flower headpiece to match, which just gets popped on right over the curled hair. It was surprisingly secure despite not having any clips or anything. Angela's version of the dress turned out so cute. It's really fascinating to see how our different bodies fit the pattern differently, which is it's kind of one of the cool things about making your own clothes. You can really customize it a lot, both aesthetically and also to get the perfect fit for your body shape. Although speaking of which, I do think I need to take out just a smidge in the bust. I'm getting kind of a weird flat line on the boob, depending on what angle you look at it. So just letting out that area should help with it. I really enjoyed the chance to try something new with the overlay. It turned out super pretty and I, I really appreciate the shape that the darts give. I don't often have a chance to work with them very much doing medieval and renaissance type stuff, but A plus, would recommend. Yeah, <laughs> sewing with patterns in general was really, really fun. It's not my usual, I often drape and draft, but it's, I should try it a lot more. Hair wise, I had a blonde streak before, like kind of here-ish, a long time ago, and it was a lot of fun and I kind of missed it, so decided it would be fun to try again. And not only that, but adding color to it is really not something I've experimented with before at all. So I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to be having fun with my hair and I look forward to kind of seeing where it goes next. Shout out to Angela for hosting me for an awesome weekend. It was really, really great to do something creative and fun, as well as get to use her space, meet her puppies. And she literally did my hair for me. Like, it's fantastic. Really, really had a great time. And I'm so glad that I didn't accidentally stain her bed with my hair. Uh, that would have been very bad. It was a really lovely trip, but I am also really glad to be home with my puppies and my comfy bed and my sheets. Once again, Brooklinen is having their birthday sale from April 26th to May 4th, coming right up right now. So go check it out and get yourself some sexy sheets. I kind of want some Cheetos.